peoples of Twitch. Welcome to the moment of my greatest misery chat. My test is literally tomorrow. Don't think I studied enough, so here we are! It's the last minute cramming! It's the last minute cramming. But I still- I, I realize that I, I need to stream. So we're streaming my cramming. Hey. hey! Oh, I forgot to fix that. Whoops. Hello there, admin! How are you doing today, admin? How are you doing today? Yeah! Fire! Look what I have created! I can't light a fire. I have made fire! I can't fire! burn the homework. I mean, I have, a, I have a lighter, but I feel like it's not very effective. Ooh! There we go, I made a spark. It's not very effective against a computer. Oof, yeah, exactly, exactly. This is why you're not supposed to procrastinate, champ, because instead of playing Minecraft, I'm doing last minute studying on chemistry. This is not, this is not gonna be fun. I even, I even, I even got like this like weird like drawing progress. I can even like draw stuff. It's gonna be great. I'm like all prepared up for studying. It's gonna be spectacular. It's gonna, it's gonna be spectacular. If it wasn't for the fact that I don't like studying, I would even say that I'm completely prepared. I just, I don't like studying. I suppose we should get started. Otherwise I'm just gonna talk here forever. I have a feeling that that one viewer number is how it's just gonna stay, chat. I feel like it's just gonna stay like that. I realize that this stream is probably gonna crash my viewer numbers, but it's fine, chat. It's fine. I brought this on myself. I brought this on myself. It seems really weird listening to Animal Crossing while looking. It it is, it is very very weird. In fact, I think I actually might ruin my Animal Crossing musical. I should have like looked up like really, really depressing music, and I could have just played it the whole time I was doing this. But I did not do that. I did not do that. So instead, we're sitting here, looking through data booklets, and question- Oh, oh my goodness, this is glorious. I can actually read this. I thought I would have to use- I even have, like, a paper copy of my data booklet right here. I had a paper copy. But turns out I actually don't need it. It's all perfectly fine, right? It's all right here. I can actually read this. This is, I don't think you guys can read it. Wait. My thing isn't flipping through. Oh, shoot. Why is my stream preview freezing? I've just been flipping through this data booklet, having a great time looking at it, and it has not been actually moving. Stream preview. What you doing? It's not frozen. Huh? Okay, apparently my stream preview is broken then. I see you scrolling. That is bizarre. Oh, there we go. There we go. My stream preview just caught up. It just freaked me out so hardcore mode there. That was incredibly, incredibly rude of the stream preview. You don't know the answer to the first equation. You have to- <laughs> Okay, I should probably actually start studying. Okay, which of the following statements makes a valid comparison between photosynthesis and cellular respiration? Photosynthesis is an exoth- Okay, let's just- let's just- let's just talk. Okay, so photosynthesis. Photo- let's just write these down. Okay, so we got- Gonna- gonna do- gonna do some, uh, good- good practices here, chat. Okay, so photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is CO2. I'm writing this with a mouse, so please excuse the terrible, terrible writing. Yeah. The stream preview isn't working for me. It's just not working in the slightest. Oh, I think it's because I have two Google tabs open. So you're gonna have to tell me if it freezes. Okay, so we have CO2 plus H2O. I think it's liquid here. This is a gas. Good one. And then that turns into energy. You know, oh, you don't think you're gonna be able to watch this? Oh, and you're moving the same time. Oh, that sucks, bro. Actually, no, there's energy here. We need energy here, because sun comes in here. So we got, like, energy here. This is fine. This is great writing, chat. This is spectacular writing. Don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so that turns into sugar. I don't feel like writing out the whole formula here. So we just got sugar and oxygen. Okay. This is actually technically, it's actually technically, like, sucrose here, I think. Okay, so we're looking at this. There is energy going in, so it's endothermic. So it's not a um photosynthesis and so no cellular respiration is backwards. Ah no, it's not C12H2207. That is 
No, that's that that's sucrose. Yeah, that is sucrose. This is actually glucose. This is supposed to be glucose. I made a mistake, chat. I made a mistake already. This is not looking good for me. This is not looking good for me, chat. Okay, so it's not A. Cellular respiration breaks down glucose, so it's not B. Uh, products in the equation for erosion of the reactants in the equation for cellular respiration. Um, that is true. Let's double check that, though. O2 gas plus- Yeah, no, that's- that's not- that is cellular respiration. Because cellular respiration is just photosynthesis, but backwards, basically. Kind of. Okay, the water in the photosynthesis reaction is in liquid form, while the water in the cellular resp- Oh, okay, so it's either C or D. Okay, let's think about it. In cellular respiration, it is glucose plus O2 turns into tricky, tricky questions. Okay, so let's see. I know that in the only difference between combustion and cellular respiration is the state of the water. And inside of an open system combustion reaction, H2O is released in gaseous form. Which means that it is released in liquid form, I believe. In cellular respiration. Which means it is C, I think. Okay, so there are this many questions. So whenever we reach one, the end of one of these, that is when I'm gonna finish test so we can see if I did correctly. Because whenever I finish the test, I can keep working on the questions once I know which ones are wrong. So that's what I'm gonna do. So once we reach the end, which... We've done one question in seven minutes, chat! We're not- we're not doing very good so far, I have- When I actually write, I'm gonna have- I wanna have like three hours to write 60 questions, so let's- Oh my god, I even have a calculator here, chat. I was prepared for this. I prepared. I don't have a brain! But I got everything else, so maybe if I prepare enough, it'll make up for the fact I don't have a brain. Okay, so we got, um, 60 minutes- 60 questions divided by 60 times 3. Okay, uh, 60 times- actually, no, it's 60- ah, Okay, 60 times 3. I have 180 minutes. Okay, 180 minutes divided by 60 questions is- I get 3 minutes per question. We are using up twice as much time as we are going to have, chat. We need to move slightly faster. Also, we're not gonna finish this whole test. I don't- I don't move that fast. I don't move that fast, chat. Not in this one stream. We ain't finishing. We ain't finishing in time. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, let's see. We have energy and enthalpy statements. Oh, oh, it's a numerical res- ALREADY?! Oh, alright, you're gonna go back to your movie. Poppy and- Oh No! Admin, why are you abandoning me? I've been abandoned! I don't want to study on my own! I don't want to study at all! That's why I have my chat here, because I thought maybe my chat would motivate me. It was a dumb idea, but it was an idea. It was an idea! It didn't work very well, but now I don't have anyone to tell me if my screen freezes, because my stream preview is not working, because Google has this great thing where in order to, like, preserve computer stuff, it just only runs one at a time or something funny. So it's just- it's just not running my stream preview. But it's fine. It's fine. Just- just, like, say in the chat if it's not working, then I'll fix it. I mean, you're not really missing much. You're not missing much. Okay, let's see. Oh, we should actually look. Okay, so we have the potential energy here, the reaction progress, one and two. Here are the reaction. The reactants are here, then we have products up here. The products have more potential energy, which means we're adding energy, which means this is an endothermic reaction. The activation energy is up here. So the enthalpy change is only between these two, which means enthal enthalpy change is number two. However, the activation energy is number one here. Okay. The net enthalpy is re- Okay. Hey, what do you know? I guess, I guess, I guess, well, I guess what was going to be used. Okay, the net enthalpy is represented by number two, because that's the enthalpy. Okay, so we have two. Same as that apply to the forward reaction. Okay, so the forward reaction is just going forwards here. Okay, so forward reaction two is correct. Okay, we have two here is correct. And then the activation energy has a positive, yeah, the positive, yeah, it's a positive. The activation is a positive value because it goes up here, yeah. This is positive. This is positive. We're good. Okay, activation energy has a positive, okay, number three. 
two and three are correct. Okay, then we have five or six. The net enthalpy has a positive. Oh yeah, the net enthalpy is also positive because it's going up. So yeah, it is five. Two, three, and five. Double check it. Yes. 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 So funny. Usually, usually my regulars are here by now. Or maybe I'm just going- Oh my god, it's only been ten minutes. I feel like I've been streaming for longer. Oh, this is gonna be a long stream. Why would I do this to myself? Ah! Okay. It's fine, chat. I've, I I did this on purpose! I trapped myself here so that I will actually study. Otherwise, I will not study. So we're doing this, because if I am on- if I am on camera, I am accountable. I- I am not very good at staying accountable when I am not on camera. Okay, here we go. We got this. We gotta keep going. Okay. Difference. Okay, let's see. Okay, the, this is the resource. Okay, wait. Questions two and three. Oh, okay. We got. Okay, so this is gonna be this is gonna be a long one. So we gotta understand this. Okay, different cells use different enzymes to metabolize glucose. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a that's that's glucose. In the absence of, wait a moment. Wait a moment. This is literally just cell respiration. Wait. Oh no, it's metabola. Never mind. I thought I could literally just mix steel. The, so the I would totally thought we could use this question to go back and answer like that question one. Just kidding. Apparently, I cannot cheat. Depressing. Okay, let's see. Okay, we got Luca. Oh yeah, it's absence of oxygen. Okay, you never mind. You need oxygen for cell respiration. This is why you're supposed to read the entire question chat. This is why you read the whole question. Okay, so. Enzymes can metabolize glucose in the absence of oxygen. Muscle cells will convert glucose to lactic acid, as represented by the following equation. Ooh, fancy. Okay, so we have energy being released here, so this is exothermic. Yeast cells will convert glucose. You know, I actually might be screwing myself over in the exam, because I cannot narrate all of this in the exam without the exam moderator coming over and bopping me on the head. So, I'm just gonna have to do all of this inside of my head. There will be no narration allowed during the test. Also, we are only on, like, question three. We are not mo- <laughs> I am not moving fast enough. It's fine, chat. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Okay, yeast cells will convert glucose to ethanol and carbon dioxide, as represented by the following equation. Okay, once again, exothermic. Okay, a student- okay, this is where we get complicated, okay. A student dissolves 6.5 grams of glucose into each of the two identical polyesterine calorimeter- Okay, we're doing calorimetry. I don't like these ones, okay. Containing 100 milliliters of water. She then added muscle cell enzymes to the contents of one calorimeter and yeast cell enzymes to the contents of the other. Covered the calorimeters and monitored the temperature change in each. Okay, spectacular. Okay, which of the following rows identifies the calorimeter that would have the greatest temperature change in the millipedic vehicle? Okay, so first things first, we gotta look at the calorimeters. Okay, so we have 6.5 grams of glucose in each one. Okay, so we are going to have how many moles? First things first, we need to find how many moles of glucose that is. So, glucose is molar mass. Oh, I need to calculate. That's a lot of stuff we need to calculate. Okay. I don't suppose that's just written down. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pull out my- Okay, let's see. Periodic table. I have a periodic table in front of me, so I'm just gonna use that, and I'm just gonna write- Okay, do I have an eraser here? Oh, this is an eraser. Can I make this bigger? Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna erase this whole thing. We just- we just- we got- we got- we got plans, chat! We got plans! Okay, here we go. Here we go! The good- the good stuff's happening. Okay, so first we need to find the- Molar mass of glucose spectacular. Okay, so we are starting with uh I need a pencil. Okay, there we go. Uh why is it doing that? Okay, there we go. Pen. There we go. Now it doesn't look so faint. Okay. Let's see two no, it's C6. This is this is already not looking good, chat. This is already not look we're all, we're already messed up glucose. That's like one of the simplest things. Okay, C6, H12. O six, yeah, O six. There we go. I am amazing. 
Okay, so we're getting the we're getting the molar mass of this. Okay, so carbons mass is 12.01 grams per mole. So we're just gonna do that times six. So 72.06. The amount of digits is important. I'm not gonna have enough room for this. Okay, there we go. And then we have Oh, h times 12 is 1.01 .01 times... Well, we got 12.12. .12. Fancy. Okay, 12.12. .12. We're doing great, chat. We're doing great. I am making progress, chat. I'm making... Okay, then oxygen is 16. And because you're wondering where I'm getting this, in case you're actually trying to learn from this, this number right here is what we're using. So for oxygen, we have 16. So we're taking the 16 by that, and since there's six moles, six, six oxygen atoms inside of each unit of glucose, we are doing 16 times six. That is 96. And nine, oh, that is a, that is a bad nine. That is a bad, we're not going to talk about that. I'm realizing that I did this in front of my chat. Looking over at my stream preview, which is slow, it's just like really, really behind. So it's actually okay, it's just very, very behind, I'm noticing. I just did the, all of that in front of my chat. Well, you know what, it's fine. Okay, we are now doing 72.06 plus 12.12 .12 plus 96 is 180. It's fine, we're underneath the chat now, we're in the clear, 0.18 grams per mole mole is a unit of it's kind of like how you say a dozen it means 12 except for moles means like some sort of crazy number i can't remember the number but like if it was pennies it would literally like reach out of the earth it's crazy it's a very 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 big number oh, okay let's see so now we need to look back at the resource. Okay, so we are doing 6.5 grams, which means if we do 6.5 divided by this number, we can get how many moles we're doing. Yeah, that's correct, right? Yeah, it's correct. I think. Yeah. Hmm. Because the other way I could do it is this divide- this- multiplied by one divided by what i'm so confused now chat i'm always confused okay well i know what i'm doing kind of okay so if we take 6.5 grams and divide it by this heckin chonkers number we end up with 0.0360 Five, oh, three, six, one moles. This is how many moles of glucose were sticking inside the calorimeter. Okay, so now we get to see how much energy this is gonna release. Okay, so per mole. Oh my god, I did not need to do all that. I did not need to do all that. We have the exact same amount of moles per each one. Whichever one releases the most energy will heat up the calorimeter more. Oh my god, I am stupid. I just wasted so much time. Oh, I'm sure that like the next questions are gonna need it. So it's not a complete waste of time. But my god, that was a waste of time for this question. Okay, so, muscle cell enzymes release more, or make the thing release more energy. Okay, so, greatest temperature change is muscle cells, so it's A or B. The manipulated variable, the glucose was not changed, but the type of enzyme was. So, B, 2, 2, B. Check, next. <sighs> In comparison to a reaction pathway without an enzyme, the activation energy for the reaction pathway provided by either enzyme will be blank, and the value of enthalpy change, the delta H means enthalpy change, for the reaction will. Okay, so when you add in enzymes, the enthalpy change does not change, ever. Okay. Yeah, in comparison to reaction pathway without an enzyme, the reactivation energy for the reaction pathway provided by either enzyme will be. Yeah? Okay, what's that? Let me read that again. Okay. 
So, we are in comparison to a reaction pathway without an enzyme. Okay, so, the activation energy for a reaction pathway provided by an enzyme in comparison to a reaction pathway without the enzyme, the reaction pathway with the enzyme will be... Oh, the, acti the activation energy. The activation energy will be lower with an enzyme. Whew, okay, wow, they really worded that one really bad. I'm blaming them for that one. I'm blaming the government for that one. That, that wording stinks. You suck. Okay, so, the activation energy is lower. Okay, so it's C or D, and the value for the enthalpy change will be unchanged. So, D is D! Spectacular! Okay, the student collected the following day- Yeah, oh my god, I don't, I don't think I needed to do any- I don't think I needed to do any of it. Okay, let's see. The experimental value for the molar enthalpy of reaction for glucose- Okay, experimental value, which means how- what is the molar enthalpy per mole of glucose? We are only using this many moles of glucose. Okay, so we did actually need this number. Spectacular. Spectacular. Okay, so we're looking at the volume of water the and the change of water, as well as the um, specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.9 joules per gram multiplied by Celsius. Okay, so we are looking at, we need to do the equation M, C, delta, that's a delta, T equals Q. This is the charge the amount of energy that's actually used, actually put into the calorimeter. This is the mass of the water. This is the constant. Uh, is that actually supposed to be a C? I have no idea what this... I have no idea what this letter is actually supposed to be, but I know I have to multiply using the const the, the constant of the substance inside the calorimeter, which is water. And then we have the the change of temperature. So we are looking at the mass of water, which is 100 milliliters. However, it has to be in liters. So we are actually looking at 100 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.1. Okay, so we're looking at 0 0.1 times... 4.9, because that is water's, con uh, water's, um, constant thingamabob. The specific heat capacity, that's the word for it. It is correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, I'm just double-checking literally everything right now. I don't have the time for this, but it's fine. It's fine, Chad. It's fine. We're doing great. I mean, look at- oh god, actually, don't look how far we've come. That's depressing. Okay, now we're looking at- and then we're also multiplying that by- Okay, so it increased. We're gonna do 31.5 degrees Celsius minus 21.4 degrees Celsius. What that is in American, I have no idea. Okay, 4.2319 is what we're looking at. So Q equals 4.2319. This is some quality writing, chat. This is some quality writing. I would just like to say that. That is some good writing. Okay, so this is what Q is. So that is how much was produced from 6.5 grams. So now we take this number and we divide it by this, and it'll show us how much energy is produced per mole of glucose, which should actually be a pretty big number. No I think I must have done something wrong because glucose is supposed to give a decent amount of energy. Oh, I don't actually. I have a really tiny full amount. So, oh wait, that'll make a bigger number. I'm dumb. Okay, so wait, we're doing four point two three one nine divided by zero point zero three six zero seven five zero three six one. I think I punched in that number right. Okay, spectacular. And that gives us 117.308. I'm just gonna call that good enough. There's a few more numbers, but it's fine. 
Wait, was that? That was a three. That was not a seven. That was a three. Okay, 117.308. Mm -hmm. Joules. That's a joule. Joule per mole. That's a joule per mole. I did this in joules. Very good. However, I am giving my answer in kilojoules. So, we need to divide this by a thousand. Divide that by a thousand is... 0 0.117308 kilojoules per mole. Okay, let's see. I'm looking at three digits, so I'm only going to put in 0 0.12. 0 0.12, because we're rounding it off. Okay, now I need to access my keyboard. I buried it in paper. Okay, just let me find my keyboard. I found it, chat. Okay, zero point... Oh, I just realized that... I think that... I think I'm using... Oh, I can use a comma! Oh, I love being in a bilingual country. It recognizes the comma. This whole time I realized I've been using a comma there, and it auto-fills it to a period. That's spectacular. Okay, zero point one two. That seems... Wrong. Something about that seems wrong, but I'm not sure what. I think it's fine. Maybe. I mean, this, this, this looks reasonable. This looks like a reasonable amount of the, this seems like a reasonable number for the combustion of, wait a moment. Oh, wait, no, I'm still fine. Wait, am- no, wait. No, wait, it's fine. Is it? Ooh, wait, there's a really quick way to test this! Oh my god, I'm stupid! Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. If the experimental value is this, the experimental value for the muscle cell enzymes would be 125.7 kilojoules per mole of glucose. I know that experiments don't always turn out the best, but that is very different. I done did effed up somewhere. Dun did messed up somewhere, and I don't know where. Oh no, don't make a streak there. I need to see that math. I need to see that math. I did the math wrong. Okay, what did I do wrong, chat? Ah. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's find the let's find the let's find the energy tank. Joules per no 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 that's that's correct. This is this is joules per mole. But this is actually closer to what it should be in kilojoules. Go back and look at ah, that's what I've been doing. Okay, there we go. So we have 0 0.1 multiplied by the change, which is, let's just actually do 30, okay. 31 point someone, I went up to four viewers for one second, then I went back down to three. Whoever popped in here popped right back out again, and I do not blame them. I wish I could be that person. Person, take me with you. Take me with you. Okay, we're doing 31.5 minus 21.4. Okay, so we are doing 10.1. 10.1 multiplied by 4.19 because that is the mass of water. That is, that is the energy, the specific heat capacity of water. <gasps> Wait a moment. What's the cup? Oh, it's polyrysterine. Never mind. Polyrysterine, you can ignore any amount of heat that goes into it, unfortunately. <sighs> okay, let's see. So we're doing polyesterine, high milliliters of water, okay. Okay. We're okay. We're okay, chat. Oh, did I actually- did I calculate the amount of moles correctly? Because that- that might have been something I did. 
Okay, mm let's see. So we're doing time specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. We got that. Multiplied by the amount of water we have, which is 0 0.1. Whoops, did not add and multiply there. Just wrote a very long number. Okay, 4.2319. That is what we got. Okay, so now we need to do that amount of charge divided by the amount of moles. However, first things first, let's make sure we have the right amount of moles. So we're doing 6.5 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 180.18 for glucose. So we have, okay, that is the correct number. So we're doing 4.2319 divided by this number is this number, but that is joules per mole. This is kilojoules per mole! What? What? Okay, well, you know, let, let, let's just finish this line. Let's finish this line. Let's finish this line of questions, and we'll see what's up, if we got it right. Because it doesn't actually give me an answer. It just tells me I did it wrong, which is very, very helpful. I mean, thank you. I know I got it wrong now. Don't know where I got it. Okay, we'll see. We will do our whole line here. Okay, I have done five questions and it has taken me 30 minutes. I think I need to do better chat. I think I just need to do better. Okay. Much of the following potential energy diagrams. Oh, equation two. Gross. Okay. Equation two. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, carbon dioxide gas can be captured and used to produce methano- oh, gross, methanoic acid. As represented by the following equation, CO2 plus H2 turns into- hoo I love- I love chemistry sometimes. You got like the dumbest things here. I know this is methanoic acid. I should call it methanoic acid. But all I can think of whenever I see it written out in its formula is just hoo That's all I can think of. And I- Cannot take myself seriously because of it. Okay, and methanoic acid in the presence the methanoic acid in the presence of a catalyst, which is kind of like an enzyme, but not an enzyme, can be used to produce electricity as represented by the following equation. Woo! Fancy. Okay. Okay, to make equation two here. Okay, so energy is being released, so it is exothermic. Which means energy is going to be released. Here, because energy is being released, the energy had to come from here. So the reactants have more potential energy than the products. The products have less potential energy, which means potential energy will be up here, and potential energy will be down here for reactants' products. Because the potential energy is going down, the delta H is actually negative. The change in enthalpy is negative. Okay, so enthalpy is negative, enthalpy is negative. So it's either A or B. However... Here we have reactants with more potential energy, and here we have products with less potential energy. Wait, what did I just- I think I said these are less. No, this is more, this is less. There we go. A, it's A. It is A! Okay, when an enthalpy change of 200 kilojoules is observed in the reaction presented by equation 2, the mass of CO2 that will be produced is... Okay, so, per mole of CO2 produced. Okay, so per two moles of CO2, they have 508 kilojoules. Okay, so first step is to find out... Okay, wait, let me erase this. Can I just reload this? Uh-oh. New drawing. Okay, spectacular. It's okay. It's okay, Chad. It's okay. I thought I done broke it, but it's okay now. Okay, so first things, I want to find out how many moles of CO2 are being made for 200 kilojoules. Okay, so 200 divided by 508.6 kilojoules is 0 0.39. So that's how many times I'm doing this equation. I am doing this equation 0 0.39, a bunch of numbers, times in order to make 200 kilojoules. So I take that, and that is 2 moles of CO2. So, so I'm taking this and I'm timesing it by two moles because that that represents two moles, I think. Kind of, yeah. We got big brains, chat. We got big, big brains are happening here. 
Okay. So if I am doing if I'm doing this times 0 0.39, that's how many times I need to multiply this to get this. But if I'm multiplying this by that, I also need to multiply this by that same number. So we're doing that. So I'm getting 0 0.78647267 long number moles of CO2. Let's write that down. Okay, so we have 0 0.78647. Seven. Two. I'm also saving this number inside my calculator so I can use it. So don't worry, it's not just written down here. I cannot read my own writing, so this would not be helpful to me. Okay, so this is how many moles of CO2. Now I need to multiply this by its molar mass, which if we go back to our periodic table, ka-chow, we're looking at CO2, which is carbon, which is 12.01. Hey, our view number went back. Welcome! Take me with you! Take me away from this wretched studying. I hate studying. This is awful. Why did I do this to myself, guys? So I got 12.01. <gasps> study stream! Hey! It's crazy! Hello, 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 crazy! Welcome to the chat! Yes, yes, it is a study stream. I'm dying inside, but I literally have my test tomorrow. It's worth like 30% of my grade. I need to study. So I am studying because my my chat holds me slightly accountable sometimes. Slightly more accountable than I hold myself. Okay, so to get the molar mass of CO2, we need to do carbon, which is 12.01, plus 16, plus 16. You've packed for your trip tomorrow and you can't sleep tonight. Ooh, that's so adorable, Cruzy. That's amazing. Also, huh? Hello, Slash, and what's with this strange texture pack? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's up with this strange texture pack, but I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. It is not spectacular. Okay, so our molar mass is 44.01, and I need to multiply this two of these. Actually, let's do it. That is a horrible mul- We're just gonna ignore that. We're just gonna ignore what just happened there. You think there's a Greg deck? <laughs> Greg mod, it's fine. Ah! Ah! No! Slash! Gone! Goodbye! By slash. Okay, so we have to multiply these very large decay. We have zero. I think that's actually a very small number. Okay, so 0 0.786476267. Ignore me while I'm trying to read my writing. There's zero one. There we go. Now we need to multiply this because this is how many moles we are using. And this is how many grams per mole. So now we need to multiply with this. Never did you think you'd see a study stream. I, I, do a brick wall stream. It actually might be more interesting, Cruzy. It actually might be more interesting than this. But you know, a study stream, I did not think I was going to do one either. But then I'm panicking about my test tomorrow. So now we are doing one. Okay, so these two multiplied together is turning into... 34.61 blah 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 uh, okay, so that is how many, that is, that is, that is how, that is how much CO2 in grams will be produced, which, when we round that, that's gonna turn into 34.6 and, <gasps> yes, it's one of the options, it's a good day, Chad, it's a good day, it's one of the options, oh, I'm so happy. You watched a four-hour stream of a person staring at a PNG of a brick wall. Yeah, no, that actually might be more interesting than this, Cruzy. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie might be more interesting. Okay, let's see. What are we looking at next? Okay, so... Woof. Okay, so we're still looking at the same two equations. The interaction descriptions that about that apply to equation one. Okay, so equation one. Let's look at equation one. What do we know about equation one? CO2 plus, so carbon dioxide plus hydrogen gas turns into methanoic acid. The delta A, the enthalpy change is unknown. Okay, so we need to calculate the enthalpy change. In order to find enthalpy change, I'm going to be using a fancy thing over here. Oh, this is actually it. The standard molar enthalpies of formation. We need to use that. I will be using a paper, though, and I don't have enough monitors. So I have a paper copy here. So we're going to look at it. Okay, so my formation here. Carbon dioxide is getting deformed. That is not a word. It's getting deformed. You are deformed, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is... Okay, let's look at it. 
carbon dioxide in order to get formed is losing 393.5 kilojoules. However, because it's actually getting deformed, that is reversed. So we have positive 393.5. Oh, let's make a new one. Let's make a new one of this. Okay, new drawing. Spectacular. Okay, so 393.5. Yeah, 393.5. Okay, so we're looking at 393.5. Watch me mess up this number just trying to transfer it. Transfer? What? I'm confused what's happening. Okay, so we have plus 93. Okay, next one is... Hydrogen gas. Because hydrogen is just an element, it has nothing. It's nothing. It gets ignored. And then formation of methanoic acid. We need to find that here. Here I was. I literally have the paper out in front of me. Instead, I am using this because that makes me that makes sense. Okay, methanoic acid. Is this even gonna be here? <gasps> there it is! Haha, <laughs> okay, it's minus 425. Okay, minus 425. Point zero. You gotta, gotta include the point zero. Okay, so we're looking at 393.5. Oh, I just made like an L on my calculator. How did I even do that? Okay, 393.5 minus 425, not 6, there we go, is minus 31.5. That is the enthalpy change. Because the enthalpy change is negative, that means that the actual reactants and products is losing potential energy, which means the energy is actually being released, which means that this reaction is actually exothermic, which means exothermic, which means number two is correct there. During the reaction, energy is released to the surroundings. Yes, that is what exothermic means. Spectacular. Energy would be a reactant. It is actually a product because it is being released. I'm gonna feel really stupid if this is completely wrong because I feel very, very confident in this. Okay, the potential energy- Oh, I was just talking about this! The potential energy of the reactants is greater. Yes, because it is losing stuff. Spectacular. Okay, how far are we until I'm checking? At the end of each column, I'm gonna check. I don't think I'm- I think I might do two columns, maybe three columns if we speed up chat. I might get to multiple choice question 22. Maybe. Maybe. That's a maybe. It's a pretty hardcore maybe there, chat. Oh, we're back to the three viewers. No. <laughs> my chat left and they didn't take me with them. That is my biggest offense here, is that they didn't take me with them! I don't want to be here either, chat! Okay, let's see. We have a new thing. Okay, hydrogen cyanide gas. Ooh, fancy. Is used in the production of many plastics. Plastic?! Whoa. This gas can be prepared by the reaction of methane and ammonia in the presence of a catalyst as presented by the following equation. Spectacular. Okay. Oh my god, we're doing one of these. I hate one of these. Oh. I hate these. I hate these with a burning passion. Okay, we need to do a lot of writing. We need to do a lot. Okay, can I actually just like screenshot this and then copy no i don't i don't think i can do that on stream oh, oh well oh, okay i wish i could just like doodle on here that would make it so much easier but i don't know how to do that. that that requires too much brain power i don't have that if i had that type of brain power i would not be here emergency studying i would just be happily sitting knowing that i am smart Okay, let's see. Okay, so in order to get this type of stuff, I can't just do the thing I just did here, unfortunately. Because if I were to guess, probably hydrogen cyanide gas isn't on the molar anthropogenic formation. Because it's so random. Yeah, there we go. It's not here. It's not here. Which means we have to use these. Okay, so I want... I don't want nitrogen in this equation, so I need to cancel that out somehow. Okay, so I need to flip this around. So, okay, so I want HCN on this side, which means HCN needs to stay here. Spectacular. Oh, I'm gonna have to write this down. Okay, so HCN needs to stay on this side. So we're gonna do H2 plus 2C. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do a new one. I'm gonna have so many drawings here. It's gonna be crazy. Okay, so we're looking at H hydrogen gas plus 2 carbon. Oh, can you see that through the chat? I'm not sure if you can. You can. Okay, we will move that. Okay, hydrogen gas 
Because heaven forbid, heaven forbid my three chat members who are probably lurkers not see my struggle. Heaven forbid that. So hydrogen gas plus two carbon plus nitrogen gas. This is very, very ugly chat. We just don't talk about it. Turns into two. Oh, two. There, it fits. HCN. Two HCN. Perfect. And that is plus 270.3. And when this happens, you get 270.3 kilojoules of enthalpy change. Which actually means that, like, this is being absorbed into 2HCN. So actually it means that the energy is actually on this side. It's confusing, I know. Okay, next is... I do not want nitrogen on this side, but there is nitrogen on this side right now, and carbon on that side, actually. But we are going to focus on nitrogen for now. In order to cancel out nitrogen, it needs to be on the opposite side. So we are going to do 2NH3 here. 2NH3 turns into nitrogen, one nitrogen gas. One nitrogen gas plus three hydrogen gases. And I'm running out of room here to write the enthalpy change. Okay, there we go. I feel so fancy, you know, drawing all this stuff. I feel like all of the fancy science videos do this, but usually have usually those science videos have a brain. There is no brain here. Okay, plus 91.8. Ninety-one point eight kilojoules. Because I am reversing the reaction, the enthalpy change needs to be reversed. That's because it's not negative here. Okay. Next thing I need to cancel is the carbon, which also needs to be on the opposite side. So we are going to do. Actually, ooh, because I need two carbon, I'm just going to multiply this right off the get-go. So we're going to multiply this while we're flipping it. You shouldn't do this because it gets confusing. I get confused, but I'm fine. I'll be fine. Okay, it's two CH four. Okay, it's two CH. Four, I believe that's ammonia, right? No, that's methane. We're fine, Chad. This is fine. You know, that's ammonia. This is methane. There's a slight difference there. Just a little slight difference there. Okay, so two CH four turns into two. Actually, it's four hydrogens now. Four hydrogen gases plus two carbons. And that turns into positive 74.6 times 2. So let's do that. Positive 74.6 multiplied by 2. Oh, I'm doing some weird stuff. Okay, so 74.6 multiplied by 2 is 149.2. Plus 149. That's a 9.2. It fits. Just barely, but it fits. That's an 8, right? I think that's an 8. Okay, now we have to do some fun math. Okay, so now we have to try to look through my messy writing and try to figure out what's going on. Okay, so on this side, let's start with the carbons. Okay, so actually let's, let's use another color because then I can be really, really, really fancy. Okay, so we have two carbons here. So two carbons here, cancel out with two carbons here. This is, this, is, this is the really fun part. This is the only part of this I enjoy. We have a nitrogen gas here. We have a nitrogen gas here. Oh, I should pay attention to states. Okay, everything is gas. Everything is in gas form here, except for solid, except for the uh, solid carbon. But don't need to worry about that. Okay, spectacular. Okay, so we have two NH three here, but it's fine. There's no NH three here. We do have two CH four. Okay. Oh. Okay. So let's see what we have now. Okay. Let's write down what we have now at this point. Okay. So we have an H two on this side. I'm gonna cross it out as I write it down, just so I remember it. And then we have a 2NH3. 2NH3. Check. Plus 2CH4. Check. Turns into 2HCN. Plus 3H. Two plus let's just check this off as we go plus four h2 hydrogen gas more hydrogen gas so much hydrogen gas it's gonna it's going crazy 
And that is it. Okay, I will deal with all of this math later. I just need to make sure this is correct first. Okay, so we have one hydrogen here. I can cancel out one of these. So I'm gonna turn that to two. I should use a different color. There we go. There we go. We're, we're going fancy now. Okay, we're going to, uh, I don't know what I did here. This used to be three, now it's a two. Okay, so we have two N H three plus two C H. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, four. That's a four. If four turns into two H C and plus two plus four, so six hydrogen gases. There, all of these can be divided by two, so we're gonna do that to make N H three plus C H four turns into H C N plus three hydrogen. This is spectacular. You know, I'm realizing now this would literally be like the perfect time for anybody who does not approve of Minecraft streamers to turn onto the stream because look at me, I'm such a responsible Minecraft streamer, chat. We're doing chemistry. And now I have to check this is correct. So, two, so well, NH3 plus CH4. NH3 plus CH4. Ha ha! Awesome! Then HCN plus 3H2. H. Ah ha ha! It worked! Okay, so now we need to add up these numbers. Okay, so 270.3 plus 91.8 plus 149.2. That is correct, because I had to, yeah, I had to swap both of these, which is why they're positive, and this was already positive. This is gonna be a really big enthalpy change. Okay, so the molar enthalpy reaction for hydrogen. Okay. So, the molar enthalpy reaction for this whole thing is 511.3. However, the enthalpy of reaction for hydrogen in kilojoules per mole, this is all in kilojoules, so the 511.3 is in kilojoules per mole. However, because there's three moles, we need to divide that number by three, which actually gives us 170.4. It's a three-digit answer, so we're just going to write in 170, because four rounds down. Poof! Okay, how many more do we have to go with? Okay, we have one more question and then we get to see how good we did, chat. One, one more and then we can see how, how stupid or smart I am. Okay, in equation two. Oh, I don't wanna do this. Okay, so in equation two, we're looking at this specific equation here. Compared to the reactants, the chemical potential energy of methane is... Okay, so methane versus reactants. Okay, so the reactants, here's the methane. Because the enthalpy change is negative, that means that energy is being released. So there's going to be CH4 plus energy here, which means that methane is going to have... Less potential energy. Yes, methane is going to have less potential energy than the reactants. So it is A or B. The oh, this chemical potential energy originated from the sun. All energy on this earth comes from the sun at one point. At one point it came from the sun. And the sun just loses energy forever. What a sucker. What a sucker. The sun is such a sucker. Okay, let's see. The enthalpy change for methane plus ammonia with a catalyst is this. Okay, wait. I just calculated this. That is 511 point... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why didn't my answer turn up? Because that means my other answer's wrong too. Uh oh. <gasps> oh my god, wait a moment! I didn't divide the whole thing! Because I divided the whole thing at the end by two, I needed to divide the. Mm, 
Okay, so never mind. I need to divide 511.3 by 2. And that is this answer. If we need to sneak through, so that's 255.65, which rounds to 255.7, which is C. However, that means we need to fix this one back here. We need to divide this new number by 3, meaning we have 85.2. Which is, it makes more sense because it usually likes having a decimal right in the middle there. Okay, there we go, 85.2. That is what it is. Okay, spectacular. Now, that is, oh, I accidentally went too far. Whoops. Okay, ready? We're gonna look through this. Okay, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad. We got too wrong. We got too wrong. I can, I can, I can accept this. I can accept this number. Okay, let's see. Okay, we have 0 0.12. Okay. Okay. Okay, we looking at this. We looking at, okay, experimental value for the molar enthalpy of- Oh, this is the one that I felt I got wrong. This is the one that I had no idea what was going on. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the experimental value of the molar enthalpy of reaction- Okay, so first we need to see- I, I already felt like I did this. How on earth? Okay, volume of water times the temperature change, which is 31.5 minus 21.4. Spectacular. 10.1 multiplied by 0 0.1 liters of water multiplied by 4.19 because that is the fun thing. It's the, there we go. It's the specific heat capacity of water is 4.19 joules. And that is all the correct units to get 4.2319 joules. That is how much it was used. Although, I think like polyesterine foam cups, I can calculate that. So maybe I need to know that. Oh no, it's just two identical polyesterine. It doesn't say. Okay, so. It's fine. Okay, let's see. Um, although maybe do I need to also calculate the the cell enzymes in here? No, I don't think I need to. Okay, so the glucose here. This. Okay, so it released four point two three joules. 4.2319 joules. That is how many joules it released. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. Gotta do a new one. Okay, there we go. New one, new one, new one. Okay. So it released four. Po oh, it saved my color. Let's go. 4.2319 joules of energy. This is how much energy it released per 6.5 grams. Okay, so let's, let's just write that per 6.5 grams. 6. 0.5 grams of glucose. Okay, I'm gonna multiply this so I can just get rid of it. Okay, let's look right here. Okay, so I want to get rid of grams. I'm gonna write grams down here and I want moles here. So how many moles per joule, which I can flip around to joules per mole. Okay, so we're gonna write mole up here. Okay, so for one mole, how many grams is it okay so we're gonna recalculate the glucose molar mass just in case that's what we messed up on so six times 12.01 is 72.06 plus 12.12 .12, because that's 12 times 1.01 .01, .01, plus six times 16 Okay. That is 180.18. What am I doing wrong? Oh, wait a moment. Wait a moment. I think I might see what I'm doing wrong. I might see what I did wrong. Okay, so wait. 6.5 divided by 4.2319 is 1.53595318 grams per joule multiplied by 1 divided by is the same as just being divided by 180.18 is 0 when what 
This one says it's 0 0.0085 moles. Because the grams are going to cancel out. Moles per joule. I'm going to write the one there because that's going to do something. That's going to do something. So then we can just flip that around to be one joule divided by, if I do one divided by this number. Okay, there we go, that's the trick. Okay, so if I flip that around, per, it is 117.308. Joules per mole. Wait a moment. Huh? I think we're back to where we started. Okay, so. Wait a moment. That's joules per mole. In order to get kilojoules per mole, I still have to move that. One, two, three. That's still zero point. One, one, seven. Kilojoules. Per mole. What on earth? <laughs> okay, wait. Just out of sheer morbid curiosity. Just a sheer morbid curiosity. What happens if I just put in 117? Ah. Uh. Aha! column didn't look it didn't look too bad no but what i don't understand is how it stays as this how does it stay as kilojoules doesn't make sense because what i'm what i'm doing when i first find because units just carry around kind of like they're a number it's kind of weird but in order to get this number what I did is I multiplied mass times... Actually, let me exactly show what the units would be. What the units would be is... The units would be joules divided by grams. Actually, let's, let's do this fancy. Okay. Somewhere else. Uh, different color. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm looking... Oh, it's my favorite color. Okay, so we're doing joules divided by grams multiplied by degrees celsius then i am multiplying that by a change in temperature so nothing here times the change in temperature which is degrees celsius then i'm multiplying that by the mass of water which is grams because milliliters are equal to grams <gasps> Oh my god, that's it. I was using liters. I need to use grams. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. So I'm supposed to mul I'm supposed to multiply by 100 instead of 0 0.1. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Found it, chat. I found the problem. I found the problem, chat. Okay, the molar enthalpy reaction for okay, wait a moment. Okay, if I Wait. I got this one correct. Which means. Oh, wait. I bet you I was asking about one of the equations. Oh, yeah. I was asking about equation one. Oh, my God. I'm an idiot. 
Okay, so it's 91.8 divided by 3, which is 30.6. This is why you read the question chat. This is why you read the question. Ta-da! Okay, now we're gonna finish this column. Does that mean- yeah, that was- that was- that- actually, you, you were not helpful. I don't think you mentioned milliliters at all. That was 100% my brain just taking a while to kick in. But I mean, you're helpful. You're- you're keeping me on track. The rest of my chat has fled. Which I do not blame them. I do not blame them in the slightest. The only reason I am here streaming this instead of Minecraft is because- you just saw, you just saw why, chat. You just saw why. I need, I need this time. I need this extra time, chat. I need this extra time. It's fine, it's fine. I knew, I knew that something was wrong. I should have believed myself. I should have believed myself that something was wrong. Okay, the enthalpy change associated with the fermentation. Oh, 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 oh. In the absence of oxygen and glucose, you can undergo fermentation producing ethanol and car alcohol, yeah, and carbon dioxide. So as represented by the following equation, assume it the... Okay, so the enthalpy of formation for glucose is the same as the value for glucose when it's in a solid form. Because technically we're using aqueous here, which is technically different. Okay, so we are looking at the enthalpy of formation for... First, we're doing glucose, but reversed. Okay, so glucose, but reversed. Where is glucose? A, B, C, D, I, H, I, J, O. Oh, wait, where's G? A, B, C, D, E, G. The glu glucose, there we go. Okay. okay, so this is gonna, because we're reversing it, it's going to be positive. Positive 1,273.3. Awesome. And then, we gotta go back here. I'm just putting this on my calculator. I'm not writing it down, because that takes extra time, and I don't feel like it. And then we're doing 2 ethanol. 2 ethanols being formed. We don't need that. 2 ethanols being formed, which is minus 273. Okay, so we're doing plus negative 277.6, plus minus 277.6, plus whatever this last one was, which is... Two carbon dioxide. So we need carbon dioxide. Where is carbon dioxide? There is carbon dioxide. So once again, plus negative 393.5 plus negative 393.5. I could put some multiplication in there, but then I have to use brackets. And I do not feel like using brackets. So that is minus 68.9. Let's double check what it is asking for, though. The enthalpy change associated with the fermentation. Okay, so it is just asking for that. Okay. Minus 68.9. That is what we were looking for. B. Spectacular! Spectacular. Okay, in the fermentation reaction, ethanol is the product of... We're looking at oxidation or reductions. Okay, spectacular. So if ethanol... Ethanol... Carbon dioxide. Okay, so whatever it is, it's gonna be opposite. Okay, so let's look. Let's look here. Okay. So when we're in here, when... Let's look at what each thing is doing. Okay, so this magical thing happens within these things is that they have magical numbers that like even each other out. Because none of them have any positives or negatives, all of their charges are zero. So in order to balance that out, we have to look at what each thing does. Okay, so, if I were to guess, carbon is probably what is going to change here, because hydrogen or oxygen are usually pretty stable. Okay, so, hydrogen is a positive 12 number. So it is positive 12. Wait, well, actually, no, that doesn't really make sense, because if hydrogen is positive 12 and O is minus 2, usually, that's just canceling each other out, so C would be 0. Which doesn't really make sense. Eh, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're assuming it's 0 there. Here, we're going to have OH, which is minus 1. Hydrogen, which is plus 5. Plus 5 minus 1 is plus 4. In order to make that 0, C2 needs to be equal to minus 4, which means each C is worth minus 2. Let's make a new drawing. C equals minus 2 for the first one. For the first one, C equals minus 2. Which, it went from 0 to minus 2, which means it gained electrons, which means it was reduced. That makes sense. 
it was reduced because the number went down. Okay, next one. CO2. O2 is... 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, which means C is plus 4. C equals plus 4. 0 goes up to get to plus 4, which means it lost electrons, which means it was oxidized. Hey, this is what Cruzy was talking about that time. I was talking about how confusing stuff was about how oxidizing doesn't mean oxygen. See? Oxidized doesn't mean oxygen! It's weird! Okay, so... That means that C... That means that ethanol is being... Ethanol is the product of a reduction half-reaction. So C or D. And carbon dioxide is the product of a... Oxidization reaction. So we're looking at D. Okay, spectacular. We're doing great, chat. We're doing great. We are chugging along. I'm going much slower than I need to on a test, but I'm sure I'll go faster when I'm actually on the test and I am not narrating to chat. Also, I actually technically have six hours to do it. Technically, I do. It, I, technically, it's the test is designed to be done in three hours, but I have six hours to do it, I think. Because the government is fun that way. They realize we should, we are making, we're making kids write tests that no other province needs to write. So, I mean, let's give them six hours. So, I mean, good for, good for the government. Good for the government. Okay, we're looking at hydrogen plus chlorine gas turns into hydrochloric acid. I think that's hydrochloric acid, actually. I want to say that's hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride. Okay, then we're looking at... I think that's sulfide. Okay. Other the equations above the redox, okay, redox reactions. That means it is being reduced and oxidized at the same time. That's fun. Okay, we gotta look. Okay, so H2, yes. Okay, so both of these are worth zero at this moment. Both of these are worth zero. However, H goes positive here, which means it is being positivized. Yeah, that's a word. That's a word. It's be it's becoming positive, which means it's being oxidized. Chlorine is becoming negative. However, because they're both going to the same compound. No, I don't think this is redox because each species is not doing both. So this is not redox, which means I think actually only D is possible. Let's double check though. If both two and three are correct, then I'll then I'm calling it cool. However, if they're not, then I'm thinking that they're counting this as a species. It's been a while. Okay, let's see. Okay, so here we're looking at SO3. O3 is minus 6, which means S is counting as plus 6 right now. If we look over here, S could only have gone up or down. So it's not it's not doing anything special. It's just it's just doing whatever it's doing. And whether it goes up, whether it goes down, it does not count as the species doing redox. Okay, so actually I don't think any of these can because <laughs> I need to have multiple things on both sides in order to actually count. Oh. I mean, technically, no, because that doesn't really make sense because hydrogen went down, chlorine went up, but those are different things. I don't think that counts as a redox reaction. This means okay, so let's, let's let's just keep looking. Let's just keep looking. Oh my gosh, wait a moment. It's literally right. I'm so stupid. If I just kept looking, I would have actually it would have actually made sense. Because I bet you this is minus two. Each one is minus two here. Each one is minus two here. This one here is oxygen. Is worth minus two again. Because oxygen doesn't ever change, is the trick. Or rarely ever changes. Means only sulfur would be changing here. What? <laughs> okay. So I think. So I guess yeah. I guess HCl does count as a re redox then, because one's going up, one's going down. One's going up, one's going down. So it counts as a redox then. Fun. Oh, okay. So one's still in it. Yes. But two, I don't think counts because only sulfur is changing. 
Only sulfur is changing, and it only changes once. So it cannot be reduction and oxidization. Okay, we're looking at ammonia here, plus water turns into... Wait, no, that's ammonia. Wait, what's that then? Wait, one of these is ammonia, and one of these is ammonium. Which one is it? I can't read that. It says it on that on that weird little table of common polycat. I got my paper copy out here. It's slightly bigger. I can stick it closer to my face. Okay, ammonium. I was right the first time. This is ammonia, and this is ammonium. Okay, this I'm pretty sure is an oxidization react as a redox reaction. I've seen this from time to time. So nit okay, so this is here. This is plus three, which means N is minus here. N is minus three. Here it becomes minus four. Actually, no, it's still minus three, actually. It's still minus three because there's a plus here, so it doesn't change at all. <gasps> oh my god, I th I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I've been thinking redox is the wrong thing right now. Redox just means something changes in its number. It doesn't mean- I don't think it means reduction and oxidization. I think it's a different- I think that's a different thing. It's like reduction or oxidization. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Okay, so it is one. Okay, does sulfur change? I actually need to look at this now. Okay, sulfur goes from plus six to two, eight, six. Okay, it doesn't change. So two is not it, which means it can't be A or D. It is B or C. Okay, so we're looking at three, basically, because four is... Should be guaranteed. Okay, let's double check this. So, N did not change. H did not change. H, O, H did not change here. O and H did not change, which means three is not a redox, which means B. So long as we double check four, that should be redox. I'm discovering I'm very, very dumb, chat. I was, I was on a roll. I was on a roll, and then I started rolling off of the hill. I was on a good hill, and then I fell off. Okay, let's see. We have an H3, 72. Okay, so O2 is zero here, and then it goes... Okay, and then it's in here, which means it's automatically redox. Okay, so spectacular. It is B. Oh my goodness. Wait, which one? What's it called then if it does both? I know there's a special word if it does both. I thought it was redox, but I don't think it is. I think it's called stunning Alice. I have to look that up after. I know there's a word for it. Though. That's what was confusing. Okay, well, let's see. Some groups of bacteria use hydrogen sulfide gas for chemosynthesis instead of the water used in photosynthesis. The chemosynthesis process can be represented by the following equation. That's a lengthy equation there, bud. Okay, during the reaction represented by the equation above, the hydrogen sulfide is the reducing agent the sulfur undergoes. Okay, so spectacular. We are looking at hydrogen sulfide. This is hydrogen sulfide. We're looking right here. We're seeing which type of agent it is. So how does it change? Okay, so hydrogen here doesn't change. So what we're really, like, hydrogen never changes. So we're looking really at the sulfide. The sulfide here is acting as a negative sulfur, I guess. The sulfur here is acting as a minus two. Over here, it is on its own, which means it's charges. It means it means its oxidization number is zero. So it goes from plus two, no, it goes from negative two to zero, which means it is getting bigger, which means it is oxidized, which actually means it's the reducing agent because it causes other things to reduce by oxidizing itself. That makes sense. So it's a reducing agent. And the sulfur undergoes oxidization. Spectacular. Okay, let's see how close I am to finishing this row, because I only check after every, every row. Okay, I'm five questions away. We're speeding up slightly. It's funny, the moment my chat stopped, like, stopped chatting, and I just had my own thoughts, I became much more bored, but I work faster. Bizarre. Although I'm distracted now, so I don't think I'm moving very fast right now. Okay, the oxidizing agents listen from strongest to weakness. Whoa, this is one of the- I remember these. I've done these so many times while I've been practicing. Okay, several metals are used in the many- Yeah, wait, I don't, I don't even need to read that. I don't even need to read that. I already know what this is. Okay, so we're looking at CO2 plus NT. Okay. So, because this reacted, we know that whatever is the- Okay, so there's something fun here, which if you look over here- Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Here we go. 
The this on this side you have your strongest you have your strongest reduction reduction agents. No. Wait, yeah. Wait, let's see. Yeah. Okay. These are the strongest these oxidize the most. Starting down here, this oxidizes the most, this oxidizes the least. And that means that because they oxidize, they are reducing agents. So we have the strongest reducing agents along this side, and the strongest oxidizing agents along this side going down to the weakest. As long as your oxidization agent is up here and your reducing agent is below it, it means it will react spontaneously, usually. Chemistry is funny that way. Sometimes there's exception exceptions. Okay, so CO2 plus plus ND. Because those reacted, it means that the the thing that oxidized here, the thing that oxidized is lower than the thing that was reduced. Okay, so we can look right here. What was reduced? The thing that reduced was CO. So let's write over here. We're gonna make a fancy table. We're gonna make our own table. Okay, so I'm gonna use a different color. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a darker color so you can see that better. Okay, so we're looking at CO. CO2 plus turns into CO. It's gets reduced. CO2 plus turns into CO. It's pretty strong, and it is stronger than ND. Okay, so ND. We're gonna do ND2 plus. Because you gotta write it this way. It's it's fancy that way. Yeah, and because ND is lower than CO2+, plus, it reacted. It's fun that way. However, Y3 plus ND did not work, which means Y3 is lower than ND. So Y3 plus is down here, and whatever Y turns into is here. I'm not sure what it turns into, so we're just gonna leave it like that. Oh, it's just Y. It's just Y. Okay, so it just turns into Y. This is not going great for me. Okay, there we go. Better Y. Okay, then SM2+, plus, which... Because it has... Because, what I'm really assuming here is because Y is lower here, I can assume that this is what is... It is going to reduce into this. Okay, SM2+, plus, I'm actually not sure what that reduces into. This could actually... Because Y is on this side, it is my oxidizing agent... Nope, it oxidizes, it's my reducing agent. Because this is my reducing agent, I can assume that SM2 plus is my oxidizing agent. So SM2 plus, because it did not react though, SM2 plus is even lower. Is SM over here? Spectacular! So this is our table. This is our strongest. This is our strongest down here, strongest. They oxidize means they're reducing agents. Strongest reducing agents get weaker as I go up the table. Reducing agent. And the strongest oxidizing agent start up here and then get weaker. Okay, spectacular. Okay, so the oxidizing agents from strongest to weakest are numbered. Okay, so strongest to weakest is a CO then ND. See, and these these are all the pluses. We're doing the pluses. Okay, so CO then ND. So five, six, five, six, and then Y and then SM. So Y, which is eight, and then seven, which is SM. Five, six, eight, seven. Spectacular. Okay, how far away are we? We are four questions away from getting to know how dumb we are. Okay, an equation that represents a non-spontaneous reaction is. Okay, so if I'm putting Y3 plus SM. Y3 plus SM will work, so it's not A. Okay, ND2 plus plus Y, ND2 plus plus Y will work. And then ND2 plus plus CO. ND2 plus will not work with CO because it's going up. I should use... I don't really need an arrow. I don't really need an arrow there, you can just see that. Okay, so it looks like it's C. Let's double check that D doesn't work though as well. CO2 plus, that was like right at the top, plus SM. Yeah, there you go, that'll work definitely. That'll, that'll definitely work. Okay, there we go, C. And, okay, the oxidization number for sulfur in SO2 is... Okay, we can look at this right here. Okay, so, because oxygen always does minus two on this, it's like a peroxide. I don't think any of these are peroxides, though. That might be a peroxide. Hydrogen, sulfur, ugh. 
I think that's actually an acid. I think I actually have that written down inside the acid table. We're looking at the- I'm looking at the acid table. There is an- there's an acid table. There is an acid table where I can look at the name. Because if it's a peroxide, it has a funny rule with oxygen. Okay, we're looking at HSO4. I don't think- I don't think it's special, though. I'm pretty sure it's boring. H- only H2SO4. Five HD- Ah, uh, there we go. Sulfuric acid. Yeah, there we go. It's not- it's not any peroxide. I always watch out for the peroxides, though. Okay, so we are looking at SO2, which is 2 oxygen, which both are negative 2, so SO is 4, sulfur is doing plus 4 there, oxygen 3 times minus 2, that's 6, sulfur is doing 6 there, and here we have a bit of complicated stuff, so we have 3 times 2, that is 6, negative 6, plus the 2 from hydrogen is negative 4, so sulfur is doing 4 as well, because you already get up to 0, and then here we have... Oxygen. We got four oxygens. So that's minus eight plus the two, which is plus. Now it's still minus six, but in order to get that up to zero, the sulfur is doing plus six. Forty-six. Forty-six. Spectacular. Okay, and now we are doing incomplete and unbalanced half-reaction equation. Spectacular. Bromine liquid turns into bromine oxide. This incomplete half reaction equation must be complete in a balance for it to represent the half reaction of bromine in an acidic acidic solution Whoa, acidic so which of the following rows identified the lowest whole number coefficients okay so we're we got to balance this okay so we're starting with br2 liquid and new drug i'm going to delete all these later but for now we're just going to chill okay so we got br2 right yeah br2 liquid liquid spectacular turns into B R bromine oxide it's negative and it's aqueous okay because it is aqueous we do know that there is water and because it says there is an acidic solution, we know that there are hydroxide ions. So this is how we are going to balance it. Not hydroxide, uh, hydronium ions. Well, technically not hydronium ions. Hydronium ions are slightly more complicated. Technically it becomes hydronium ions, but to start with, we're just balancing it with as a hydrogen ion. It's weird. Okay, we're gonna start right here. We are not gonna start with being- we, First, we're gonna start with the non-oxygen compound. Okay, so we have BR2. We have two- B, What is that? I have- I, I know there's a word. There's another that is a- okay, it's not beryllium. It is something else. Where is it on the table? I want to know its name, so I'm not just calling it brr. That's what I say. Oh, it's bromine. Oh my god, I feel like I should know that. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty important compact. I've got bromine. Okay, so we have two bromine here because we have bromine times two. So we're gonna put two bromine oxides here. Actually, I'm gonna use a different color just so I can mark what's new. Okay, we got two bromine oxides. Because we have two bromine oxides, and each bromine oxide has three oxygen, we actually have six oxygen. Which means I need to add six oxygen to this side. Let's use a different color. I'm, I'm, making, I'm making these colors fancy, Chad. I'm making this fancy. Let me use green. Okay, there we go. So we are going to add two times three. That's six. So we, uh, we need to add six oxygen, which means we need to add six H... 2O. If we add, uh oh, that's a bad two. If we add, that is a that is a way too big two. Okay, took a few tries, chat. We got it. Okay, we have H2. We have six waters, which means we have enough oxygen. However, this means now that we need to add in some hydrogen to balance this out because we have six waters, which is two hydrogens each. We have twelve hydrogens, which oh, new color. It's my favorite time of day. So we now have 12 hydrogen, there we go, 12 hydrogen ions. Because now, we now need to balance the charge. This is fun, this is where it's really, really fun. Because this has zero charge. However, over here, we got some charge. Okay, so we have two times negative one. So we have, let's use a yellow to mark charge, that makes sense. I can't even see this. Uh, yeah, you can see that. I'm sure you can see that. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's a good color. Okay, so we have minus two here. Because two times minus one, we have minus two. It's a nice mustardy color. It looks great. Okay, then over here we have 12 positives. So we have plus 
12, which means in total we have plus 10 charge on this side. This is zero, this is plus 10. Doesn't really add up. However, the only thing we can really add to equalize it is negatives, which means we need to add negative 10 on this side to make this equal. So we are going to add 10 electrons, because electrons are worth negative. Oh, we're done. That's it. That's all we need to do. Okay. Spectacular. All of these coefficients are okay, because there is a 1 here, and you can't make 1 any smaller. I did do that correctly. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. We are looking for the lowest whole number. So, so water and then H+. plus. Okay, so water is 6. H is 12. So 6, 12. 6, 12. Spectacular. So weird seeing like 3 and 6. Because yeah, those are smaller. But we can't make beryllium any. We can't. Not stop beryllium. That is not beryllium. That is bromine. We cannot make bromine any smaller. So it's 6 and 12. Okay, we are moving on. Sulfur dioxide gas in air contributes to the formation of acid rain. Spectacular. The concentration of sulfur dioxide gas in the air can be determined by dissolving the sulfur dioxide gas in water and then titrating the solution produced with a standard solution of potassium permanganate. The titration reaction can be represented by the following unbalanced equation. During the titration, a student would expect to observe... Okay, so as I add... Okay, so I am titrating... I'm titrating a solution of, of sulfur dioxide gas with potassium permanganate. So as I add in permanganate, I'm going to create H plus ions. H plus ions turn into hydronium ions, which is very acidic. Which means that the more I add in MnO4, KMnO4, which will turn into MnO4, it'll become more acidic. So, during the titration, a student would expect to observe an increase in acidity. Here to doubt by this. Well, that's not going to make sense, because you're adding stuff, so, so volume doesn't make sense. The electrical conductivity also doesn't make sense, because the more... The more you add, actually, the more ions you're going to get, because these are both ions. I tell you, this is also an ion. You're getting a lot of ions, and ions conduct electricity. So, that doesn't make sense. An increase in the intensity of the purple color. Okay, so I actually do need to double check that. It doesn't mention any purple color, but if we actually check the booklet here, there is a fun color thing right at the end. There's no indicator that it talked about, so we can't use that. However, if we look here, we have a few new things. Okay, so permanganate is being added. So as you add in permanganate, technically, yes, there will be a purple color. However, that will be at the end of the titration. Because when you first add in the purple, it's going to get reacted with all the SO2. So you're actually not going to see purple until the very end after the titration. And it says during. So I think I'm going to go with increase in acidity. Okay, okay, how close are we being done? Oh my gosh, yes, we're done the row. Okay, we can check the row. Okay, ready, chat? Ready? <gasps> yes, we got it right! I'm not gonna fail! <sighs> yes! It's okay, no, we're doing great, chat! We're doing great! Okay, we got, we got half an hour left to do this row that we're working on now. Okay, we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so ten. If it takes me about three minutes per, I can probably do it. As long as I do a little bit less than three minutes. Okay, 150 milliliter sample of SO2 you require. Blah, 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 blah. To completely react the concentration of SO2 in the sample. Okay, so. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, so we are going to start with 150 milliliter sample of SO2 required. 3.15 milliliters. Okay, so if I have 3.15 milliliters of this much moles per liter of potassium permanganate completely react okay so the first thing's first i need to build a balanced equation we're gonna start right here okay so we're gonna start with the balanced equation new drawing oh i made so many drawings okay so we're starting with our equation let's just start right with the equation because okay, so we have s oh, oh can you i don't think you see the chat we're gonna so we're gonna scoot down a bit okay 
Okay, we got SO2 here. Plus potassium permanganate, which we're just doing, uh, we're just doing um, permanganate because the potassium isn't really included inside of the reaction. It's not very helpful. So we're just completely ignoring it, basically. It's just gonna float around happily. MnO4 plus H2O turns into, I'm running out of room here. I'm running out of room here, chat. Turns into SO4 2 minus, minus, oh, I did not leave room there. I need to leave room there. Cause we need to add in coefficients, SO4. I feel like my writing has gotten progressively worse the longer I've gotten gone, which I feel like it should be the reverse because I am getting practice now writing with a mouse. Not very good at it, as you can see. Plus MN2 plus, oh no, that's so ugly. MN2 plus plus hydronium ions. Okay, so we're gonna start with the most complicated one. Actually, no, first, first, we, first we have to start by balancing the non-oxygen, non-hydrogen stuff. Okay, so MnO4, one Mn turns into one Mn. Let's start with that, grab a blue color, one Mn, one Mn. Spectacular. One S, one S. Next, balance the oxygen. Okay, so I have one, two oxygen, plus four oxygen, that is six oxygen. Over here, I am getting four oxygen, because I'm getting two, I still need two oxygen more. Two oxygen, because I need two waters. Okay, if I have two waters here, that means I have four. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, I thought I, I missed, I messed up where the arrow was. I thought I had the arrow on the opposite side. Okay, wait, I done effed up somewhere. I done effed up somewhere. Okay, wait, I thought I thought this was an error. This is not an arrow. Okay, wait, okay, so I have one, two, six oxygen here. Plus a minimum of seven oxygen here. Oh boy. And I have four oxygen here. Okay, so in order to get to six, okay, so I want to have two here. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is this is where we have to get complicated because we have to do a bit of nasty math involving the oxygen. Okay, actually, let's just get rid of all of them. Let's get rid of all. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's just start with the oxygen because obviously that's gonna be our biggest holdup. Okay. So we have one, two, four, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so I have four, six, seven. So we're doing one here. I'm gonna need two S, so I need a minimum of two here. One here, because that makes that easier, because so I'm doing four, this is eight. I need to do two here, which is gonna go eight. Which is, wait, did I do this wrong? No, I wrote this correctly, we're doing okay. We're doing okay, chat, we are doing okay. We are balancing an equation. We know, okay, I'm gonna need a minimum of three here. This is becoming evident. Okay, so we need three here. So we can have three here. Because I have three here, I have three SO4, that is correct, yeah, three SO4s. That means I have four plus four is eight, which is 12. I have 12 of these. Which means I can have one of these and one of these. It means I have six plus four is 10. And then I can have two here. Perfect! Okay, and then I have four hydrogen, which means I can have four hydrogen ions. Let's double check. Okay, so three sulfur, three sulfur, one manganese, I think it is, one manganese. Spectacular. Four hydrogen, four hydrogen, 12 oxygen, 10 oxygen, six oxygen, Six oxygen. Perfect! Okay, this is our balanced equation. Spectacular. Next thing we need to do is... How many manganese did I need to completely react? Let's check. Okay, so three... 300... 31.5 milliliters divided by a thousand means I had 0 0.0315 liters. 
Okay, so if I multiply that by the 0.01 moles per liter, it'll show me how many moles I had of permanganate. Okay, so I had 3.5... I have... 3.5 times 10 to the... 10 to the power of minus 4 moles of... For manganate. That is how many moles I have. So, in order to get that to that, I need to. Okay, I need to multiply this times the mole to mole ratio to see how, in order to completely react for each one mole of permanganate, I needed three moles of the, what's the name, sulfur dioxide. Okay, so we are doing. Okay, I can actually make this. I can make this nice. Okay, so I have three point one. Okay, spectacular. Okay, there we go. I have three point one five. If we we we, need, we can even write the units, so we can keep track of it. Okay, mole. M, N, O. Four multiplied by the mole to mole ratio which we need to get rid of mno4 so we're doing one mno4 divided by three. spectacular okay so we are because we're just dividing by one i can just do 3.1 times 10 to the power minus four multiplied by three thankfully i still have that number inside my calculator so i don't have to punch it in multiplied by three is Nine point, nine point. Oh, that's a bad nine. EBD. That's an even worse nine. This is. It's fine, chat. It's fine. This is turning out. It's fine. It's fine. It's it's fine. It's fine. Everything is perfectly fine. Fine. Okay, so we have 9.45 times 10 to the power minus 4 is how many moles of sulfur dioxide we have. And we started with 150 milliliters. I'm going to be answering in millimoles per liter. So first, let's turn 150 milliliters into liters, which we need to divide by 1,000, which means we go backwards. 3, 1, 2, 3, which means 0 0.15. So we're going to take... 9.45 times, times 10 to the power of minus 4 and divided by 0 0.150. We have 0 0.0063 moles per liter. To turn it into millimoles per liter, we are going to multiply that by a thousand. And that will give us millimoles per liter. 6.3. Oh, that's not the number. Uh-oh. 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 Mm. Uh -oh. Did I maybe balance this wrong? Did I balance it wrong? I did. Uh oh. Okay, let's check. Okay, 0 0.0. 5 multiplied by 0 0.01. That's how many moles we had. Multiply that by 3 is exactly how many moles we should have had. So we take that amount of moles, turn it into millimoles right away. If we turn it into millimoles right away, and I only did 100. There we go. And then we divide it by 0 0.150. Whoop, that's a 2. Whoop. There we go. 150. I'm still getting 6. Point what? I'm stupid. Okay, so I think I must have balanced this wrong because. I think my math checks out. Okay, so. Hmm. 
Although, actually, wait, Millimol, did I get that M right? Is the M the right one? I'm sure the M is the right. No, Millimol is 10 to the power of minus 3, which is 3. Perfect, okay. Hmm. One liter says 1.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3. <laughs> 0.15, yeah, that's right. Okay, so if I'm looking at... Oh, wait a moment. Oh my god, wait a moment. I think I did... Oh! I was doing... I think I was doing the wrong number right off the get-go with the multiplication of the... Oh, because I think I was doing 0 0.315. I think I need to do, I needed to do 0 0.0315 multiplied by 0 0.01. Hoping that is the right thing that I messed up anyways. Really, really, really hoping that's the right thing I messed up. I don't think it is, though, because the math is still looking incredibly similar to what it was before. Yes, it is still looking incredibly the same as it did before. It still is the exact same as it was before. Hmm? Wait. Oh my gosh, this is literally the first question on the column. I'm never gonna finish. I am never gonna finish. Oh wait, I'm sure that I must have balanced the equation wrong then. Uh, otherwise I'm perfectly fine. 12 minutes left. Yeah, there's only 12 minutes left to blitz it. Shh, nah, shh, nah, shh, nah. I want to figure out what's wrong with this, because I've been doing okay on all the other type of questions. I just want to know why I'm not getting this one. What am I not getting about it? I'm sure there's something simple here that I'm just not seeing. I'm sure I must have gotten this equation wrong somewhere. Or perhaps if I'm supposed to multiply it by... Advocate of admin, you shush. Like, if this was actually the test, I would have skipped and moved on. But I am studying at this point. And I've gotten most of the other questions. So I just need to know what's up with this one. Okay. Let's see. What if I multiply it by 1 to 3? Because... Okay. Because to get this to that, I need to do one divided by my crazy answer, 3.15 e minus 4. Which is meaning that I need to divide it by that, which means if I do 3 divided by that answer, is how many moles I actually had. Which is still 9.4 times e to the power of minus 4. If I divide that by how many I had, I still get... Huh. I'm sure I must have balanced this wrong. I must have balanced this wrong. I checked that I balanced it right, but I must have balanced it wrong. Because there are other ways to balance equations. I can probably balance this in a different way. Okay, let's see. Let's balance this in a different way. Let's start with technically how you're supposed to, which is... Let's start with our SOs. Okay, so we have... No, not the SOs, actually. Let's start with the manganese again. Okay, so one manganese. One manganese. And I have O4. Okay, cool. One sulfur, two, one. Let's do two this time. Let's do two this time. See what happens. Okay, so that's gonna give us four plus four is eight, which gives us eight right here. Then I can't count those. 
You know, I must be multiplying this wrong because I must be balancing this in the wrong order because you're supposed to be able to include that. So let's start with two here and see what happens. Okay, so if I'm starting with two manganese here, I'm gonna start with two, two manganese over here as well. The problem is that there is multiple ways to balance this equation where it still makes sense. <gasps> oh my goodness, wait, no, because it needs to have a balanced charge as well. I forgot about the balanced charge. Oh, okay, so that's the trick. Okay, so I need to look at the charge. Okay, so I have two M and two. Okay, there we go. Let's try it out this way. Okay, so I have two M and two here, two M and two. Okay, so if I'm looking at eight plus 10, 11, 12, that can be... Oh, I need to balance the S's though. So, okay, let's do... Let's just try out my three S's here because that's a good multiple. It gives me a good amount. Actually, let's do, let's do two for now. Oh no, because I need to have a lot of oxygens on this side. So we're going to start like that. Okay, so we have six here. Okay, so that's not going to be enough. So let's go all the way up to four. See if we can make that work. Okay, so now I have four here. I have eight, 16 oxygens and eight there. So I have eight for the rest here, which is eight. That's not going to be enough. So we're going to do five here. Admin, what's up with the um? You need to start with at least three MN. Um, yeah. Maybe. 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 Probably. Probably. Probably would have figured that out. Okay, let's see. Five times four is 20. Well, I suppose I should work backwards. Because if I'm working... If I'm working with an unbalanced equation, I should work backwards. You have two minus plus one, so you need at least three plus. Yeah, what I should really work with is I should work backwards because I'm given the end. Uh, I'm giving the end product, so I need to know the backwards. But the only plus charges on MN. So I guess, yeah, I need to balance the charges first. Okay, so I have minus two plus two minus. So in order to make those work, I need to have multiples here. Okay, let's start, let's start with the charges. Okay, so. In order to equal this out, I can have three here to be six, two here, so I have enough solvers over here, two here to be minus four, and then two here to be minus six. And then we balance the other side. So three MN means three MN over here, two means two over here, and two means two over here. Now we need to check if the oxygen balance is out, which I don't think it's going to, just looking at this. Okay, so we have 204, which is eight. And then we have already way past eight. Okay, so wait, no, how does this make sense then? So let's, let's wait, let's just go back to next to see if the charge actually makes sense here, right off the get-go. Because back when I was doing this, let's see how this actually worked. Okay, so 3SO2, 3SO4. Okay, when I did that, I needed to balance this. Okay, how did, how many oxygens? Okay, so I have 3 is 6, plus O4 is 10, plus 12 is 22. Wait, no, I did that wrong. Okay, so this is 6, plus 4 is 10. This is 12, which means I needed two of these, and then I had two of these. It means I had minus six, plus two, minus four, minus five. So I had minus five. So this actually didn't balance out. Okay, so how do I balance this out is the trick. Okay, so I need to have a lot more of these positives. Okay, so let's... Let's just throw caution to the wind. Let's start with six. Okay, so six of these is 12 of these. Okay, if I have six MN, let's see if here, because with bigger numbers, I can do like division stuff, which is easy, which is easier. Okay, so we have six MN stuff. Okay, so we have six MN, perfect. Okay, I have that much plus 12. How much minus two can I get where I try to get the most minimum of this? So, because it's easier to balance water. Okay, if I am looking at minus two, I am looking at minus two SO4. Is there any charge here? There oh my god, there's a negative charge on MnO4. No wonder that didn't make sense. 
Okay, MNO4 is a minus charge. Okay, MNO4 is a minus. Okay, so I'm looking at a negative charge here then. Okay, so when well that makes okay, wait. Ah! Go back. Go why? Why is there when was there a blue there? When did I put a blue there? How long has that been? Oh my gosh, I am so stupid. I cannot believe I completely forgot about that minus. That completely changes everything I was doing. Ah, this is why you read the entire question, chat. This is why you read the entire question. Okay, so we're looking at SO2, MNO4 minus, H2O, SO4, K2 minus, 2 plus, plus. That is a plus. No wonder that didn't make sense. Okay, wait, any other mistakes I made that I need to know? Any others? Okay, wait, now I actually want to see what the one that I drew did. Whoop, that's reversed. One. Two. Three, one, and two. It's depressing how much I've done this. This actually just is memorized now. Okay, so I have a one negative on this side. This is minus six. This is minus six. This is minus four. Minus three. So I just need plus two. Which means if I want to do plus two, the easiest way is to add one of these. We're gonna do that, which means I need to add another one of these, which because I am adding another four oxygens, I need to add another one of these, which means I need to add another one of these which means I have an extra two oxygen, which means I need to add another one of these. Wait a moment. Which means I need to add another one of these. This is getting bad. I'm gonna write this underneath, five. Five. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Okay, so how many oxygen? Okay, I'm at 10 oxygen here. I'm at four ox 14 oxygen, 16 oxygen, 20 oxygen. Which means I need four more here, which means I need six here. Five, two, six, five, two, two. Okay, let's double check. Okay, let's check charge first. Okay, so minus two. There's a minus two here. There is negative 10 plus 4, which is 6, plus 2, it's just plus 4. Bruh. I think I'm getting further, I think I'm getting further away from my goal at this point. Okay, I don't- HOW AM I SUPPOSED TO WORK BACKWARDS FROM HERE?! Bruh. Okay, wait, no, wait, what? How am I actually supposed to work backwards from here? Wait. No, seriously, how am I supposed to- <laughs> This is not boding well for my exam tomorrow, chat. <laughs> ah! Welp, it'll be fine, chat. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Everything will be okay. Wait, okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's give it let's give it one more shot. Let's give it one more shot and see if we can do it. Okay, so. We have a single minus here. We can move in multiples of one here. We can move of multiples of plus two, minus two, or positive. Okay, so starting with positive, every positive two is a negative two, is a negative one that I add. Okay, so let's do, if I add three here, then I'm gonna end up with positive six here, and minus three here. I should be able to work with, so let's do three. 
3, just right off the get-go. Okay. So in order to get this down to negative 3 from positive 6, I need to do minus 4 plus 1. I need to do two of these and one of these, which would mean I am at positive 6 minus 4. Oh, wait, no, I did it, I did it the wrong way. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have it the wrong way. I'm going to it the wrong way. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Wrong numbers. Okay, wait. Okay, so. Okay, so if I am doing positive 6, to get down to minus 3, I need to do a minimum of minus 9. So I can do 4 here to get 8, and then 1 here. And then we can stop around these numbers a little bit to make it work. But I like having this large number here because it equalizes out the, all the oxygen from here. Okay, so 4 times 4 is 16, which gives us 4. It gives us a wiggle room of 4, which we have already exceeded! Do you want a hint? Yes, please. Yes, please. How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to work backwards? It doesn't work backwards. How many oxygen on one side versus the other? Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, so O2, 6, 4 is 10. Oh, no, this is just 6. 7. 7 oxygen here. 4 oxygen here. Uh, multiples of 4. So I need to do at least 14 times 2 of each. 7. No, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is seven on this side, just naturally. Four, five, six, seven, naturally. And then there is four on this side, naturally. And this, that's how I balanced to start! I started by balancing with that. Two plus four plus, no, two plus six, seven. Two plus four plus one equals seven! Do not tell me otherwise! Six plus one is seven. Two plus four equals six. Admin, that is six. Seven. It is seven. Fourteen is not a multiple of four, so I can't just multiply all these by two, unfortunately. You're being brain dead, sorry. So am I! So am I! Okay. Let's see. How about we do... Three. I know this is this was literally the best. Okay, let's let's look back at what I did because this originally this was like my best attempt, and I was able to get here. So let's see if we can work off of this. Six plus ten, six four ten, twelve twelve. Perfect. Okay, now when we worked off of this, this turned into minus one plus two. Minus six plus two minus six was minus four, which turned into minus three. So we had minus three. So I needed to add two, which in order to add two, I need to turn this into two, which adds a minus one to here, which is where we ended up going around in circles. Okay, so MnO4, because I added an extra 4 oxygen, I need to have another one of these, which means I end up with 4 here. Or because I added 1 here, I needed to add 1 here. Because I added 1 here, I added 2 oxygen. Which actually, let's count this out right now. Let's count this out right now. Okay, so right now, with 4, 2, I have 8, 16, 18. 4 times 4 is 16, so I need 2 more oxygen, which means I need 5 here, and I add in another 2 here. Oh, that's why I made a mistake. I went over there, but I didn't need to go over there. I could just stay right here, but because I added more... Okay, there we go. I forgot about half of my equation. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I have 4 sulfur... Shoot, no, because I needed to go back there for the five sulfur. Bloody heck, just kidding. 
So I need to go back there for the five sulfur. Okay, now if I do this, I have 10 oxygen. 10 oxygen. Eight, uh, 18 oxygen. 20 oxygen. 20 oxygen. 2 magnesium, 2 magnesium, 2 hydrogen, 2... Four. Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> no, this is four. Okay, so that's what I did. Okay, I'm being brain dead. Okay, so we have five. Okay, so we have ten oxygen. Ten oxygen plus eight oxygen. Eighteen oxygen plus two twenty oxygen. 20 oxygen, 5 sulfur, 5 sulfur, 1 manganese, or 2 manganese, 2 manganese, 4 hydrogen, 4, oh my god, that whole time, that whole time, I was losing my mind because of that. Bruh. Okay, now we need to look at charge, though. Okay, so, okay, positive 4, positive 2, positive 2, that means we're looking at positive 8. Positive 8. Okay, I'm going to use my calculator. Okay, positive 8 minus 5 times 2. So minus 10 is minus 2 and minus 2. Oh my god, literally that whole time, this is what was messing. Literally that whole time. That whole time. I feel so dumb. Okay, so what we're actually looking at is we actually need to multiply... To multiply 3.5 times 10 to the power minus 4 by 2 divided by 5. Okay, there we go. 3.15 times 10 to the power of minus 4 multiplied by 5 divided by 2 is 7.875 times 10 to the power of minus 4. However, we're doing... Oh my god, no, that's still the wrong- No, wait a moment, what? Okay. No. Okay, wait, 3 point- 31.5. Did I maybe flip these wrong? Okay, wait, let's double check, let's double check, let's double check. Wait, wait let's double check, okay, we got 3.15 divided by a thousand equals 0 0.0315 liters that's what we got that's what we got chat multiply that by the 0 0.01 moles per liter thingamabop and that gives us 3.15 times 10 to the power minus 4 moles now that's correct okay then in order to get rid of that we have to multiply it by 5 divided by 2 Multiply that by 5 divided by 2. Because it is 5 moles. Oh my god, wait, I forgot the last step. I forgot the last step, chat. Now that we have that, we have to divide it by 0 0.15 to get the concentration. Because it's not asking about the moles, it's asking about the amount of concentration. Ah! And then we need to divide... Which we need to multiply that by 1,000. Because we're looking for millimoles. Oh, it... Was not very happy about that. Okay, uh, there we go. I accidentally messed up. Okay, there we go. 5.25. Okay. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna check it. Just gonna check it. We did it! Woohoo! Only took about half an hour. <laughs> okay, so lesson learned, chat. Look at the equation. Just look at the equation and count the hydrogens. Don't just look at the co- Oh my god, I feel so stupid. I literally wasted an half an hour on that. All right, well, it is at the two-hour point, so I'd like to thank you all for watching today's stream. I hope you guys all have a much better day than I just had. My god, that's stupid hydrogen. I'm never gonna forget that hydrogen. I'm never gonna- Oh, it's into batteries now. I studied- I studied these yesterday. We're good. We're good. We're good, Chad. I studied that yesterday. Okay, well, thank you all for watching today's stream. Hope you guys all have a stupendous day, night three, and panic attack, whatever this is for you. Hope you guys have a good one, and I hope to see y'all in my next stream. 
Okay, let's see what we're gonna raid today. Hey, who are we streaming today? Oh, let's go raid Simple. Let's go say hi. Everyone, go say hi to Simple. Have a great whatever time it is for you. Ciao! I'm gonna go bash my head into a wall. I cannot believe that it was the hydrogen that whole time, the moment I realized everything made sense. What the heck? Ciao.